Hello, everybody, and welcome to Knights of the Pageless Library. We are a little podcast that reviews audiobooks. I am Bo Knight, and with me, as always, is Ryan Knight. And today, we are taking a look at the Cthulhu Casebooks, Sherlock Holmes and the Shadwell Shadows by James Lovegrove, narrated by Dennis Kleinman. Did I say that yep. right? That's how I would have said it. If we're wrong, someone please email us, kotpl.pod at gmail.com and let us know how wrong we are yeah or right i don't know let us know anything <laughs> honestly <laughs> that's true yeah we uh we we like any sort of interaction any sort of fan interaction is awesome in our we, book so we might like it we don't know <laughs> true we're waiting on some real fan interaction the best we've gotten so far is like comments on youtube which anybody who does that uh keep them coming that's also awesome yeah. <clears throat> so, this book is book one in a series of three books. So, the Cthulhu Case Books is the series name, and Shadwell Shadows is the first one in the series. And then I think there is the Misc- Miskatonic Monstrosities, and the Sussex Sea Devils is the third one. So... Yeah. And this book originally came out in 2016, but the audiobook was published in 2019. Yep. <clears throat> this is a uh like a mystery thriller uh crime fiction type of novel. Yeah, I mean I feel like when you say Sherlock Holmes you kind of know exactly. And we'll we'll talk about that a little bit more uh later but yeah i agree um so what did you think about dennis kleinman how do you think he did in this one i think he does okay i actually thought he did really well to be honest um i i thought he did good he has a very it sounds like he is like british so he already has like a british accent i think he Um, is but he just I thought he did really good about changing his voices, you know, per person who he's talking to. I thought he did a did a pretty good job. Yeah, I mean he's he's good. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't yeah, I don't have any issues with him. Okay. I don't know if I'd put him up there in like my top ten, but I do think he did a, a pretty decent job. Yeah, he's he's good, but not great. I thought he added to the story. How about I say that? I thought he. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a better way to think about it. Yeah, did, I, he didn't. He did not detract at all. Listening to him is not grading. It's it's he, he's it's very pleasant just listening to him. Yeah, it, that's what, what I would put it at too. I think he uh, he adds to the story, and I think he makes this a uh, he definitely makes this a better listen overall. Yeah, I agree with that entirely. Uh, so this one is clocks in right at 10 hours and 20 minutes. So a pretty decent length book, actually. That's uh, yeah, it's pretty long. Yeah. And this book, I should mention, is we're obviously listening to this off of Audible. And this um, is included with your Audible subscription. Right. I didn't even realize that. Yes, that's how I got a hold of this one. So this one is included. The other two are not. Uh, but this one is included with your Audible subscription. So, um, or I guess you could do a one-time purchase instead of subscribing for eight dollars a month. You could do a one-time purchase. This one would cost you twenty-four forty-seven. Yeah, so it's end of number. I agree. <clears throat> okay, so let's get into some more uh, more detailed stuff. So, what do you think? Was this one easy to follow? Kinda. It's not super dense, but you kind of have to pay attention. Um, I think it, I think what makes it pretty easy to follow is the fact that most of the story is told. This is pretty much told from first person of uh, Watson, uh, yeah. re- recounting his 
this adventure that he had with Sherlock Holmes, which is basically how all of the Sherlock Holmes stories, to my understanding, are written. Um, so what makes this uh, relatively easy to follow, in my opinion, is that it's very linear because yeah, it is. N- not a lot is going on outside of what Watson can see. So Right. Yeah, true. It makes it to me that makes it a little bit easier to follow because you're not jumping back and forth between characters, you're not jumping for back and forth between different eras or times or any of that stuff. So true. Yeah, you're you're right. It is pretty easy to follow. Um easy listening, I mean, kind of kind of goes along the same lines for me. Uh I thought this one was I found a few parts where I was like, "Hang on, what what are they talking about? I might skip back 30 seconds or so, but it was relatively easy to pick back up on what was going on. So, so you want to get into the recommendations? Yeah, let's do it. And I want to let you go first. I hated this book. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I've, I take a lot of issue with a lot of this book. And I feel sure. like the slapping of Cthulhu case files on this, I have a lot of issue with a lot of that. And I don't, I mean, we'll get into it a little bit more after the spoiler wall, but like, this made me like, not like Sherlock Holmes. Sure. I understand I, that. I take a lot of issue with a lot of things in this book. So, <sighs> I, so actually, to be honest, um Dennis Kleinman's narration was my favorite part of this book. Oh, easily. Um, yeah, I, I thought he did a good job. He's very easy to listen to and uh, does a good job of kind of bringing these characters to life. However, I agree with you, and we are not alone in this. Um, so I latched onto this because of the Cthulhu name. Um Right, and, but I, that's like, totally on purpose. Exactly. So I feel like in Cthulhu and Sherlock Holmes on there, you are going to automatically grab people from both of those groups and hook them with that. But because this sort of takes place, I've never actually listened to any other like Sherlock Holmes stories. I don't think I have but either. Because at the beginning of this story... um there's a quick little part about Watson meeting Sherlock Holmes. I'm assuming this takes place in sort of like an all. I think it, uh, I think that there's like, there's a lot to be said too, for the fact that he uses both of these big names to draw people in. And then, like, a lot of comments I was reading before we started this on Audible is that it takes these two things where separate are good, and bringing them together is actually the worst thing you could have done for these people, like, for the stories themselves. The thing that really bothers me about this book is replace all the Cthulhu nonsense with just a regular cult, like a normal cult, and it would work. Yep. So it's like, why did you even use the Cthulhu stuff? I don't understand it. He he was so unfaithful to like HP Lovecraft stuff that it I don't even understand why it's here. Because he basically right. just like shoves aside all of the other stuff other than like the old ones. And I don't understand what he was trying to do. I don't get it. Right. And it, a lot yeah. of the stuff just felt completely unnecessary and like it hadn't it like didn't really pertain to anything and like if this is supposed to be like the origin of where sherlock holmes and watson met like it just doesn't make any sense right like this is like the first adventure that they went on yeah yeah that's basically what this portrays it as is it basically says that like i said the beginning of the book is is watson meeting sherlock holmes so yeah and and I've ne- like I said, I don't know enough about other Sherlock Holmes stories to uh, say much on on them. But uh, this, I feel like this actually would have been better as a standalone story in which you have a 
you know, a private eye or whatever dealing with some sort of eldritch horrors. That's fine. Yeah, That's like, a great why idea. To, why did it have to be Sherlock Holmes? And it doesn't even <clears throat> add anything to the story that it's him. In fact, I feel like it takes away. Right. Exactly. And I think because, that was most people's complaint, too. Because these these eldritch horrors affect your sanity. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't happen at all in this book at all. So it's like, why are you even using eldritch horrors? I don't get it. Right. <clears throat> I also think a big detractor from this is uh, the fact that it's supposed to be written as sort of like a memoir type thing really takes away from any of the suspense they tried to build too yeah because yeah clear yeah. clearly yeah. our characters survive because clearly he is writing this story so right. <laughs> and the fact that towards the end of the first book he mentions the other two books which was very yeah. ham-fisted um makes the sort of final suspense scene irrelevant because you know nothing bad's gonna happen in it yeah and there and there are other characters that come up later in other sherlock holmes books too oh so really you, okay you know that they're fine yeah well, like yeah, his brother so, <clears throat> right which so i just feel like i don't know maybe this james lovegrove guy supposedly he is an ancestor of hp lovecraft so that's probably his um, attraction to the Cthulhu mythos, which is great. Obviously, the Cthulhu myth mythos is near and dear to me. And yeah, but when you do it right, not when you do it so sloppily, when it's like, oh, I've heard Cthulhu's name before, and you just throw that in some shit. Right, and that's sort of what this felt like. Um, I mean, we, we have an entire other episode dedicated to the one of the omnibus collections of hp lovecraft so we we are fans of hp lovecraft like yeah, um, give me big old squid monsters i'm in and i i love anything that's like eldritch horrors but like i said this could have been eldritch horrors without the hp lovecraft names behind it or the sherlock holmes name behind it I, I even take issue, though, with it being Eldritch Horrors because they do not deal with in, like the, the sanity part of it. And that's like such a big part of the Cthulhu mythos is like encountering these things like permanently changes the way you view the world. Right. <clears throat> but that doesn't happen here. It, it like uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> there's a <clears throat> there's a few mentions of it. So, OK, so. I also don't really recommend this one. Uh, I And that's that's saying a lot, because I picked this one specifically because of the Cthulhu name. I got sucked into that. Um, but this does not lend anything to H.P. Lovecraft's legacy. No. Um, so, <clears throat> all right, barring all that, we're going to go ahead and we'll go ahead and do spoilers and we'll we'll start talking about the book. Um, and the only thing I was going to say on that is that... Uh, there are some instances of it towards the beginning of the story when that's basically the murders they're finding out about are because this that uh, the guy is sacrificing these people. And supposedly the way they turn up is because they were um, basically presented to an eldritch god. And it does. It drives them insane to the point where it kills them. So there is a minuscule amount of mention of that oh, okay you're right <clears throat> but it's i fully agree with you it's not to the extent that it should be no like <clears throat> the main characters encounter an eldritch horror and they walk away fine yeah doesn't really do that anything doesn't make to any sanity. sense that doesn't make any sense <clears throat> no and it's, I mean, it's, that, that's where I draw so many issues. It's like, why are you even using Eldritch Horrors if you're going to use them wrong? Right. I just don't, I agree. I don't get it. <clears throat> no. So, like, we'll talk about some just some kind of highlight points of the story. We're not going to go through the story in, like, complete detail. Um, 
because <clears throat> we basically have already said we don't really recommend listening to this one, which is unfortunate because I was actually excited that there was three books because it was like, oh, nice. This will be a lot of content, you know, longer books. And yeah, I just I walked away definitely wanting for more from it is all. <clears throat> um, but so the story starts out, as we said, with Watson basically meeting Sherlock Holmes. And somehow they immediately just become friends. Like, I take issue with that. And I, I, this whole book made me not like Sherlock Holmes. He is so condescending to Watson the entire book. Yeah. And he just acts like he's a fucking genius for no reason. A lot of these, like, ooh, it was just being perceptive, don't make any sense. No. Because it's like perceptive to the point that, like, You can't have I don't think you get both. You don't get to be as perceptive as he is and be also like highly athletic and also be like a remarkably likable person. You don't get all of those Dude, things at once. He's not likable in this whole story. <clears throat> I don't think so either. He no. is so mean to Watson the entire book. He yeah. is so condescending the whole time. Like basically the whole time he talks to him. Yeah, Can which we, is why God, what is he I saying? didn't really understand why Watson even started to follow him in the first place. It makes no sense. It Not makes really. no sense. And they like get this, they like form this bond over nothing. Right. Of like of, of Watson being mentally abused. Right. Yeah. I didn't really fully get that either. Um, like what, like what does he say? He's like, oh, like something about intuition is not, not, not real. Something like that. It's like, I don't think intuition intuition isn't even a thing. I'm always sure. It's like, what? Right. Go fuck yourself, <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, he does say some pretty pretty uh, prick-like things. And at one part, he's trying to get Watson to guess, and he's like, if we had unlimited time, I would let you continue to guess, but we don't. I know you are too daft to understand. It's like, yeah. are you serious? You just said that to him? Yeah. He does. He treats Watson like a child. Dude, it's it's so unbelievably, like, just rude. Yeah, and see, and I can't speak for any other Sherlock Holmes books. Maybe that is kind of how it is, but I, I don't if know. If it is enough. how he is, why do people like him? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, why is he always portrayed as, like, such a, you know, like, a uh, <clears throat> unique and likable character? Yeah, because he's, he, in this whole book, I did not like him at all. <clears throat> So the reason that Sherlock Holmes and uh, and uh, Watson get together in this is because there's a series of murders going on, and basically Watson kind of stumbles into the situation because he's trying to break up a fight at a bar, and well, it's not even a bar; it's like a brothel saloon, and uh, Sherlock Holmes is already investigating the person that he ends up stepping in between because of the murders that are happening in the town and. Sherlock already thinks that this guy is um, part of the part of the issue. Um, We don't really ever find out where Sherlock Holmes gets his money from. I noticed we don't because he's like a he's like a private investigator. Right. But but did the police pay him? I was going to say, I don't know, because during the entire span of this book, uh, he doesn't do any other jobs, so he has no income coming in. And yeah. and he's doing jobs that the police specifically say, we don't want your help. Yeah, so, and he's like, mm, no, I'm going to do this anyway. Right. Like, okay, <laughs> why, though? Um, so the unique thing about like the way these people are that are turning up dead is like they turn up every like uh, new moon, one person turns up dead. And they look like very emaciated and like drained and they have like a look of horror on their face. And so most people think that whoever is murdering them is kidnapping him, them and then starving them to death, basically. Yeah. And, uh, and Sherlock thinks he's got got a better idea. <clears throat> so they end up going to the the brothel. And Sherlock thinks that the guy who runs the place is actually the biggest like the leader of this whole thing because that's the guy he was looking for always is, you know, seen going in and out of there and working there. 
and they end up meeting the leader of this like saloon brothel thing, this uh, Chinese man. I can't remember his name. Gong Fen. Oh, I mean, yeah, you kind of skipped over it a little bit because that one guy kills himself. The yeah, see, I, I can't remember his name either, though. No, dude, I just, a lot of the minutia of this book just kind of like went over my head because it's I don't I I just I didn't care. <laughs> sure. Yeah, the guy ends up killing himself. Um, oh, but he that's right, because they first he's in, in jail, right? They catch him and he's in jail. This was so I had high hopes for the book at this part when the dude starts biting his own arm while yeah, he's in jail. He, he just like freaking bites the the arteries in his arm and kills himself. Yeah, and I had high hopes at that point because I remember my jaw fell open. I was like, oh my god, like what a freaking yeah, way to go. That's pretty hardcore. Yeah, and that, that really sucked me in because that's within like the first probably two hours of the book. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh man, like this is going to be good. And it just kind of spirals down from there. So they meet Gong Fen. He's like, he's like a, he owns an opium den. That's right. An opium den slash like whorehouse, basically. Yeah, you know, just your regular old Chinese massage shop. Exactly. <clears throat> and uh, anyways, he, uh, so long story short, Holmes ends up becoming friends with Gong Fen. To an extent, and yeah, which Gong makes Fen, no sense to me why he no. would immediately trust this guy he knows is a known criminal. Like yeah, it doesn't make nothing, any sense. No sense whatsoever. Um, and Gong Fen basically, which we might add, Watson is basically the the voice of reason in this whole thing, saying exactly what you just said, Bo. He's like. He's like, why would you go with this man? He, you know, he's a known criminal. What are you doing? You don't yeah, know. Yeah, he him. actually probably says exactly what I said. Right. <laughs> so, uh, Holmes ends up going with Gong Fen. This is one of the few parts where we sort of deviate from uh, Watson's point of view, and we actually get Holmes's point of view for this part, which was actually elegantly done, in my opinion, because. We're getting Holmes's point of view, but it's as if Holmes is telling it to Watson, and that's how he's writing it down. Right. So, it actually, I thought that was actually very, very well done for a first-person book to switch to like a third-person view. I thought it was that was cool. Um, and basically, what happens once is he goes and Gong Fen gives him some crazy drug, and he trips balls, and he ends up seeing these like eldritch horrors essentially he it opens his mind to the fact that there is an entire other you know universe pressing up against ours with these horrible monsters trying to get in all the time and and this is where my issues start coming up because if holmes is encountering these things he should be starting to lose his mind but he's not at all He's right. totally fine. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I agree. He he does. He kind of comes out of this completely unscathed, which from everything you learn from like any HP Lovecraft book and even like uh the uh, the Eric Zahn one, the Anyways, this the one story in H.P. Lovecraft is this guy sits in his room and he plays music to keep the horrors on the other side of his window away. And at one point in that book, he ends up seeing out the window or a character sees out the window and they're immediately driven insane by what Mm -hmm. they see. Like that is a common theme in H.P. Lovecraft stories or any story usually that has to do with eldritch horrors is that these things are so incomprehensible to our brains as humans that it will literally drive you insane just seeing them. Right. It's sanity shattering. Right. I mean, unless you had been, like, preparing yourselves, because in a lot of these stories, too, H.P. Lovecraft's uh, included, there are cults dedicated to worshipping these beings as gods. They are about the only ones who can withstand the 
visions of them, but that's because they're slowly introduced to visions over time. Whereas like, like this, he basically gets a full on dose of eldritch horror and comes out of the other side unscathed. Yeah, and, he, and what does he say? He's like, yeah, the universe isn't quite what I thought it was, but we still got to catch this guy. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah, and that's basically it. Like, that's, yeah. Um, so after he has his little, where he goes and friggin' trips balls, he finds his way home, and uh, shortly after, uh, I'm probably skipping a few things, but it doesn't matter. One of the big points I remember is that Gong Fen uh, basically tells Holmes that now he's being hunted by uh, somebody else, basically. And mm-hmm. apparently Gong Fen was like the confidant of some other guy, and Gong Fen was trying to pass this information on to Holmes. Because well, he's he trying to recruit Holmes. Holmes. Right. That's right. Yeah, because he's basically starting his own like Cthulhu cult. Yeah, which, okay, sure. But he didn't uh, talk to his boss before he did that, and his boss is like, well, now you gotta die. And, and Pretty much, Apparently yeah. his boss is already at the point, his boss is already at the point where he can ask these eldritch gods for help in the physical realm, which didn't make a lot of sense to me. I... I assume that's because of the sacrifices. Mm. The, okay, yeah, that he's been doing in the city this whole time. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'd buy that. So this is another point where we get a glimpse uh, through the veil, if you will, into this other dimension. Uh, Gong Fen gets them in a carriage, and he's talking to both uh, Holmes and Watson, and all of a sudden, the carriage stops. While Gong Fen was explaining that, you know, he's probably going to be hunted now from now on. And uh, they they look out, and they're basically in the middle of this long tunnel, which is obviously very dark. And at that point, they start being assaulted by, like, shadow tendrils and tentacles. Um, not only that, it's supposedly, Watson explains it as being very, like, like he's almost immediately paralyzed by the things he's seeing. Yeah. And somehow Holmes can just power right through that. It doesn't bother him at all. Yeah, and like that's the thing that bothers me about this whole story. It's like Holmes is unaffected by all this shit. Right. So, so why are there even eldritch horrors? <laughs> like right. I don't understand. So to me to me, one of the parts that stands out <clears throat> in this and not in a good way is that it is sort of like a superhero story so it is which i mean you know though i don't like superhero anything i really don't for this reason like there's a little bit of tension but then you stop and think about it and you're like well, obviously Sherlock Holmes is not going to die right now. So Yeah, he's got it, some pretty thick plot armor. Exactly, because he has to be there, as well as Watson, have to be there for the story to progress. Therefore, yeah. you know not a lot's going to happen to him. Um, and I'm kind of jaded because, obviously, I like stories like uh, Game of Thrones, where none of your characters characters are safe period like yeah true and that that makes for great tension in a story where you don't know even if you thought they were a main character needed to progress the story they might die i mean yep wrong again right so it makes there there's actual tension in those kind of books whereas oh spoilers by the way for anybody who does, hasn't had game of, you know read game of thrones people die like <laughs> that's your spoiler. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, and that's not not to say there can't be good stories with a uh, plot dedicated character, like you know a Harry Potter type of story. There are good stories out there with good named characters, but 
this one just doesn't benefit from that, I don't think. I agree. Because all the tension is gone. It's like there's no there's no points in this book that you're actually ever worried about Holmes and Watson. You're like, oh, well, I guess right. they're just going on a regular adventure. It's just like run of the mill stuff for them. Right. See, and that's that is why I personally don't enjoy superhero anything for that reason. You know, no matter how much tension they build, nothing's going to. Oh, it sounds like Ryan cut out there for a second. I'm pretty sure he's going to say is nothing's going to happen to anybody because, yeah, it's I, I yeah, I don't I don't like superhero stuff either pretty much ever. And yeah, like this, this book commits a lot of cardinal sins for me. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard for me to like this. I, I was struggling to get through a lot of it. Yeah. I mean, and I, I saw it all the way through to the end. Um, but like even towards the end. So essentially this culminates in them summoning basically the full version of an eldritch god to the physical plane yeah. and all that ends up happening is another sacrifice basically and instead mm-hmm. of getting sherlock holmes the eldritch god gets the dude who was trying to kill sherlock holmes like yeah cool but to me like it's specifically mentioned in the cthulhu mythos and in in the call of cthulhu book that when cthulhu enters our plane everyone within a thousand miles feels that like (laughs) yeah they're like all get a little bit of madness yeah or like and it explains it in the book like have you ever you know you feel like that weird tingling on the back of your Mm -hmm. neck you know it explains that stuff whereas in this it's like, oh yeah, don't worry about it. This eldritch god just ripped a freaking hole in reality and drug a few bodies in to satiate his hunger, uh, and then he now, now he's just gone. No big deal. Yeah, and and like that's what I mean. It's like, why even use the Cthulhu mythos if you're not gonna use it properly? Like right. the madness that they cause is a huge part of it. Mm-hmm. But nah, Sherlock Holmes see, basically sees an Eldritch Horror and walks away fine. I, I, I don't get it. I no, I didn't really get it either. And there were a lot of strong points, I thought, in this. Like, I liked, uh, I liked Watson's story about while he was uh, at, at war and when, he, when they, like, unearthed, like, the lizard people. That was kind of mm-hmm. cool. I like that. Uh, um. Obviously, again, it's sort of an anti-suspenseful part because they they hint that Watson might die, but it's like, well, Watson's telling the story, so obviously obviously he's fine. Right. So, and I think that's, I would assume from a writer's perspective, it is hard to build suspense uh, from like the first person narrative for that reason. Obviously, the person telling the story probably isn't going to die, so... Yeah, I guess. I don't know. There's just there's a lot more elegant ways to do it. And it's just yeah. like a lot of this book is just not elegant. And it's so... Uh, how do I put this? It's just like so... I don't know. Like it's just... It's, it's like using the Cthulhu stuff as like set dressing, but then like not addressing the things that have to go with Cthulhu if you're gonna use it. Exactly. Yeah. And it, it just, like, throws aside the things that it doesn't like. And you can't do that when you were using somebody else's already established mythos. Right. You exactly. Can't, you can't just, like, cherry-pick the things that you want for the story if you are gonna use something like that. You can't. Right, and that's probably a thing that um, I would say the Thulu, H.P. Lovecraft uh, mythos in general, uh, a lot of people do a disservice 
to the original stories for that reason. They they cherry pick the names Cthulhu and stuff and HP Lovecraft, and then they, they don't add to the stories. But like you said, they cherry pick the parts they like and they put those in their stories and they leave a ton of stuff out. And supposedly these stories were written by HP Lovecraft, right? Supposedly, that's like the the BS line at the beginning. Uh, it, it's something to that effect, but it's not. So it wasn't Howard Phillips Lovecraft that gave him these stories. It was another HP Lovecraft that is a descendant of Howard Phillips Lovecraft, the original writer. And then they were given to James Lovegrove because he is also a descendant of this guy. Yeah, it was like super confusing and 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 I think that's all just probably fictional as well to try. Oh, to... it it has to be right. It it was just more set dressing to kind of try to build the you know build the uh, legitimacy of this story. Yeah, and it's just. I don't know. Maybe I need to look into more Sherlock Holmes books to see if he is a dick in all those too. Yeah, I'd be I'd be curious cuz he's so unlikable in the whole story. I don't know if it's yeah, just me. I agree. No, I agree. I mean right up to the end. His brother was way more interesting of a character. Yeah, dude, his brother's hilarious. <laughs> I like like his He's all down like, there, there all are... The things that bother me about this book is there are some really well-written characters, except for Sherlock Holmes himself. Right. Yeah, and I'd be curious, too, is if he was going off of other Sherlock Holmes stories, because maybe he is like that. Maybe he is kind of a dick. But, yeah, in this, he was kind of a huge dick. Yeah. Like, a completely unlikable, honestly. Right. But all right, I think we've uh, we've beaten this Eldritch Horse enough. What uh, what are we gonna do next time, Bo? I think next time we're gonna do a round table. Okay, that sounds good. I think I still have to upload three round tables to YouTube because I've been forgetting. Really? So, yeah, I'm like three behind on that. Uh, and then we will do our best to try to pick out some originals for October even though we'll be getting away from that uh, format because because now Audible is formatted a little differently around the uh, uh, originals and the books available. So well, wasn't this an original kind of? Uh, uh, no, this is not. Well, I mean, if it's available through your Audible subscription. Right, but this was done by blackstone publishing this is you know they they usually will say right at the bottom right hand corner it will say like audible original okay so this is just like this is like a show that was available on netflix but not a netflix show bingo yeah so that's how they do it now is that with your audible subscription there are now a handful of books just available to you and then there are other ones for purchase Okay, that makes sense. So, yeah, if so, you guys have, like, any idea how we should kind of attack that moving forward, please email us at kotpl.pod at gmail.com and let us know your thoughts. Like, I don't maybe 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 we should only do those. Maybe we shouldn't, like, I don't know, do 12 a month. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let us know. Yeah, please do let us know. And we... We've been kicking around the idea of trying going forward to be putting out more content. We've both just been busy and, you know, even today I noticed we probably have some audio issues with the internet stuff. So we're, but we're trying. So. Yeah. I, yeah. I, w I would like to maybe step it up to two a week, but I mean, we don't even would, always hit our Thursday deadline. Right. I, and I would too. And I would like to maybe get a, head on a few you know so we have some in our back pocket but it it again like we'll we'll try moving forward that's obviously the goal so yeah that is the goal so yeah we uh we appreciate anybody who has been listening and, 
And the only thing we would ask anybody to do is, you know, whatever the kids are doing these days, leave us a comment, uh, five stars, thumbs up, whatever you can do to uh, kind of spread the word. That'd be great. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Tell your friends. Tell the homeless guy on the street who for some reason has headphones in. <laughs> yeah, let him know to pass his unlimited time. There's a great podcast out there he could be listening yeah. to. Yeah, <laughs> maybe he would appreciate it. <laughs> but yeah, thank you, everybody, and uh, we will catch you in the next one.